welcome back to the farm. So today is a dreary, rainy day outside. I've just got my fire going in the fireplace to keep us nice and toasty. And I thought it'd be a great day to kind of show you one of my favorite fall time, Christmas time crafts. So as you can see here, I make little fabric ribbon pine cones. They're great as little ornaments. They're good for teacher's gifts. Um, they're just really great and fun and easy to make. So I'm gonna walk you through how I do this, all right? So to begin with, what you will need is some ribbon. Now I got this ribbon, where did I get this? I got this at Michael's, uh, but you can probably find this at any crafting store. So you wanna make sure it's the 7 8 inch um, and at least eight yards. Now this is gonna make one pine cone. It takes a lot of ribbon to make one pine cone. And then you can pick any kind of a ribbon for the top bow. I like using the nice skinny ones because it makes a pretty little delicate bow on top. So what else you'll need is some pins. Now these are the itty bitty ones. These are five eighths of an inch long and they're just teeny, teeny, tiny. All right, you don't need the big honking long ones when the little ones will do. Okay, so I got this at Hobby Lobby and you can see it was $3.99 there. Um, but if you guys know Hobby Lobby is the, the, the place for discounts. So I always try to find things when they're on sale. So we got some of those and a thimble. A thimble is gonna be your best friend for this project because you're pushing each one of these itty bitty little pins in twice for each bit of ribbon. All right, oh, the other thing, totally forgot it. Hang on, it's way over here. Ah, is a little piece of cardboard, all right? So this key piece of cardboard is gonna measure out your different sizes um, for your pine cone ribbons. Because each one of these little uh, spikes is one piece of ribbon cut and then folded into a point. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna set everything up and then I'll come back to you. All right, so we're back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ribbon and it's a nice fabric ribbon. If you can find it without the wire edges, that's better. But if it has a wire edge, that's fine too. Um, I managed to find some without and that was pretty awesome. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna wrap it around, wrap it around your cardboard, because you, this is the length of the piece you're gonna cut. So we're gonna wrap it as many times as we can, because we're gonna have to cut through it, so we always have to remember that. I used to make these when I was younger uh, with my mom. We would make these and give them as teacher's gifts and gifts to friends and things like that. It was just an easy way of of doing it. So we're going to take our scissors, trim, and then we'll slide it off of the cardboard here. And so now you've got your loop, right? You can kind of see through a little bit right there. And you're going to stick your scissors through that and make a cut. So all of those are now cut there. Turn it over. Find your middle in there. It's there. Hard to see it. Stick it through and cut. So now we have a lot of little pieces. All right. And you know what? I just realized I didn't show you guys the kind of egg we've got. How do we make it if I don't have an egg? Huh. All right, I got these at Hobby Lobby again. Um, I love them, good for sales. So there's lots of different sizes. Uh, the ones that I had made before are a little bit bigger than this, but that's okay. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. Um, you're gonna use the same size little poke, um, pieces of fabric anyway. So like I said, this one's a set of four eggs for $3.99. It's pretty inexpensive. I'm gonna open this up. It's really loud, sorry. Oh no, there's more in here. What happened? I taped them inside. Okay. Oh, this one had a little bit of dents in it. That's okay. We're going to cover it up with fabric anyway. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our thimble, make sure we're wearing it. Doesn't matter which finger you want to push with, whether it's your middle finger, pointer finger, keep you a thimble on. I like this one because it kind of hugs it so that it doesn't fall off when you're picking things up and dropping things. It's a little nicer. So you're going to take your little square and you're gonna fold it to a point in the middle, like a little triangle, all right? And then you're gonna come up to the very top of your egg, grab a little pin, 
and push it in. Okay, and then you're gonna take another pin to the other side and push that in. These styrofoam ones are a lot easier to push things into. The ones I used like this was a solid foam and it was a little bit more difficult. So you might be able, if you have this flaky kind of styrofoam, you might be able to get away with not needing uh, a thimble, which is kind of nice. One less thing to use, one less thing to hinder yourself. So you're gonna make another point. Now you can find some ribbons way back in the day. Oh, I didn't center that very well. Look how wonky that is. Huh. Anyways, the pins from way back in the day, um, or ribbon, excuse me, was really stiff. And so you could sit there and make all the folds and just set it down and it would stay there. So you'd have a ton of them just laying around and you'd be ready to go. But anymore, they don't make them like that. So it's the joys of trying to start a crafty project that you did when, when you were a kid. Transfer that to an adult. All right, let's see if I dot it a little bit more centered on this one. And that's the joy of this, is that you don't have to worry about being super precise on the first time. I'm gonna take that off. These eggs are a lot easier. So you're gonna make a point at the top. And again, one pin on each side, just like that. Okay, so then we're gonna take the next one and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna keep making these little folds and we're gonna start covering up where the pins are. So we make another fold, nice little point. And I'm gonna cover up right where that pin is, right between them. So that's the whole goal of this whole project is covering up the pins, hide the ugly bits. So now come on on this side. that and then you're going to continue to cover up all the way around all the way until you get to the bottom so I'll do a couple more here with you and then I'm going to turn the video off and and work it down one of my big ones I could get done in about an hour and a half so it doesn't take too terribly long this is something I'm doing while the kids are at school and I can't go do much outside because it's raining. It keeps my idle hands busy. See, I didn't quite get that high enough here. Pull it up a little bit. And then repin. This is one of those projects that's really forgiving. I mean... No pine cone in nature is identical or perfect. So yours isn't gonna be either. See, I'll do the same thing on the other side. Oh, I've hit a pin, there we go. That's another reason for using these short pins. You don't run into another pin underneath it as, as often. I made the mistake earlier using longer pins because I thought that's, you know, that's what you had. That's what you use. But I was corrected by my mother today that you don't want those long ones. You want the itty bitty ones. And now I understand why. Mothers are always right, whether you know it or not. They always are. Doesn't matter how old you get, your mother's always gonna be right. All right, so I'm gonna keep going, layering it down, and I'll come back when I'm a little bit farther along. Okay, so I've went down a little bit farther here, and on the bottom, I put a little patch. It's the same strip that we've been cutting, 
Um, but this kind of fills that bottom hole a little bit because with a flat bottom here, it's hard to close it all the way up around it. So you want to put this in here just to keep it, um, keep it nice and neat at the end. So we're going to keep going. Covering up the bits. to do this watching a movie I can zone out and just kind of enjoy the time I'm sure watching it is super fascinating <laughs> this is just something fun like I said they'd be great great Christmas gifts homemade items are always the best and you can get all kinds of different ribbon for it. So I guess it doesn't really even have to be Christmas. Um, I know while I was out, I saw a lot of Thanksgiving ribbons or fall colored ribbons. Um, I imagine a bowl full of these with uh, the neutral colors of fall would be really, really pretty. Make a nice centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table. I've been having a little issue with this ribbon. It doesn't really want to stay down, and I keep getting bits that are popping up. So you can see kind of this one right here. So I'm going to tuck it back down, and then up underneath here, I will pop in an extra pin just to help hold it. See, there's another one. This ribbon is fraying a little bit on me. I'm not sure how I'm liking it very much. So if you have to repair it, you can. Just kind of tuck it in underneath one of the other spikes. My goodness, there's another one. Here we go. Just a little one. So you can see as we're getting closer to the end, it's filling in that space. It's filling it in so that there's less and less white. And you wanna try and get it as filled in as you can. I get it all finished up we'll come back and I'll show you how I make the little bow for the top okay so we finished it all up so you can see here right in the center there is that bottom patch that we use to cover things up and like I said this ribbon's a little bit pulley apart on me and it's a little bit frustrating found another one hang on let me grab a pin There we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our skinny ribbon. Um, where's my size on this? So this one's about 3 16 uh, You can pretty much use any kind of a skinny ribbon you want. Just something nice to go on the top of the, uh, of the pine cone, kind of hides the rest of that. And I like using these little pearl topped corsage pins. These are really nice for that because it gives it a nice finished look on the inside there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ribbon and curl it into a loop like that and then pop it through with the pin. Carefully don't stab yourself. I'm really good at that. As you've heard on my bread making video, I tend to hurt myself a lot. So then you're gonna just 
keep pulling and making, making loops on the pin. You can make it as full or simple as you want it. I like to make them go just a little bit longer each time. I kind of eyeball things on how far I'm pulling things apart. Whoops. So when you're done, you'll be spinning it apart, spinning it open. So you want it to be nice and full. I think I'll do one more. Just to kind of fill in the little bit of hole. And then you can cut your, oops, sorry. You can cut your tail just like that. And so what I like to do here, let me put this out of the way. Um, is I'll put a little dot of fabric glue or gem glue on the bottom and then I'll stick this through and then that helps secure it into the pine cone. So you're not just relying on that pin. You have a little bit of glue in there to help. And there you go. You've made yourself a wonderful homemade item, a little Christmas pine cone. So if you try this out, post a comment with the picture and let me see how yours turned out. I think they're super fun. It's kind of vintagey looking, um, which is back now, I guess. And it's, it's a good way to spend some time on a rainy day. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.